Welcome back to another episode of Sound and Pals Go to the Movies. This is another Throwback Thursday episode. I'm here with my friend Tuli. Say hi, Tuli. Hey guys, how's it going? And today we're going to be reviewing the movie Memento. And just a fair warning, there's going to be spoilers up ahead, so you've been warned. A man with a short-term memory loss attempts to track down his wife's murderer. This movie came out in 2000, and we have a big list of A-list actors. Even if they weren't big back then, a lot of people know them now. I'm going to start off by mentioning Carrie Ann Moss, which is, she plays Natalie. And if you uh, are a big fan of her, you would know her as Trinity from The Matrix. We have Guy Pierce as Lenny. We have also an Easter egg here. Thomas Lennon, he plays the doctor. He's the guy, if you guys remember Reno 911, that show. So he's a comedian. So with this, I'm going to throw it to Tuli. And Tuli, start us off with your review. Yeah, and actually before I uh, start my review here, I just want to give some props to also Joe Pontoliano because he did play, to me, a very memorable... Teddy. I, I don't want to come in and a, a villain, but I think that's one of the things about this movie that I really, really liked about. After watching it, it begs to question a lot of things. But before I actually go there, let me just talk about the film. I like how the story was told, like the narrative. It was told from two perspectives uh i guess you could say it that way where one was taking place in in like sequential order versus one being told in reverse order and i think this was one of those films where i don't recall any other films that have done something like this it sort of reminded me of pulp fiction in a sense where things were told out of sequence but this one it, it presented itself in these two separate timelines of being told in sequential order, of course being represented in the black and white shots, and then the, the colored scenes, which was being told in reverse order. And that was actually the first scene that we saw in this movie. And unfortunately, it was to the demise of, of Teddy and how it led up to that point. And I really like movies like this that does a great job at revealing just enough to kind of get me to want to get engaged invested in the film to see how moments led up to that and then what led up to that prior moment etc etc and it kind of at least for me it did it portrayed that condition that leonard aka lenny had his anterograde amnesia condition they kind of termed this as his like inability to form new memories it seemed to kick in every five minutes or so that's what i come to read like online and stuff about this particular condition for his character at least and so sometimes you'll see him doing something at the beginning of like a a colored scene and you're thinking to yourself how did he get into this predicament and some of them are kind of hilarious some of them are more serious like for example when you saw him running and you're you see him talking to so okay he what is he doing he's trying to assess the situation because he just his condition just kicked in. He doesn't remember what he was doing before then. And then he, <laughs> and when he, he realized that he wasn't supposed to be running towards that guy that he was, that he saw, but that he was running away from because that guy was trying to, to shoot him. It's a, it, I guess it's like dark comedy in a sense. And it's a nice touch that they add to this rather serious condition that he's having. Another moment was with Natalie. The way they portrayed Natalie was, more so Leonard's perspective when he has already interacted with her like a few times. But the scene where she brought about Leonard's condition and that she knew about it and that she, it didn't matter what she said to him, that he would just forget about it so that she could say whatever. And they got this got into like, like this escalated the situation like immediately. And because of this, Leonard, of course, ended up hitting Natalie. And then to see her like go outside and just wait for Leonard to just sort of forget this and for her to come back in and then see her act differently because she realized that Leonard wasn't going to remember what she just transpired. For them to like dissect this scene or cut this scene into two shots, separate shots, so that you can see different sides of characters, it's a very, very nice touch that they implement in this film. You get to see more of these characters as, you know, they show more of what happened in the past little by little. You know, motivation, things that didn't make sense starts to come together. And I felt for Lenny and stuff, but at the same time, you know, I also felt for, for Teddy, for Natalie, even John G., the act, a, a, uh, a, a guy who was actually 
you know, enlisted as that name, who Leonard ended up killing uh, the second time around, assuming that he was the the killer of his his wife and caused him to, you know, end up having this anterograde amnesia condition. So yeah, there's a lot of like a lot of nuances that they implement in this film that made storytelling very unique. Going back to what I said earlier too about things that this film brings up, like things that you would question. I think the first time I saw this movie, and I think I was watching it with a, a friend, I sort of brought up the idea of as, as much as I want to root for Leonard, but you know, given his condition, he is a potential threat to his surrounding because he's you never know what's going to trigger him. Like if he finds himself in a very uncomfortable situation, the instant he, you know, his memory resets, so to speak, you know, you see him throughout the movie. In, I mean, in certain parts of the movie where he's very aggressive, despite the situation being maybe more innocent than than what he had anticipated to be. Whereas other situations where, you know, you find himself waking up in a bathroom with a or a bottle of wine or whatever, and you think to yourself, oh, was he drinking or whatever? No, it was actually him or anticipating to use that that bottle as a weapon. So it, it, it comes it begs the question, you know, a, a person with his condition, is it is it appropriate for him to run wild like this? And then this is where the whole Teddy thing comes into play because he knows of Leonard's condition. He's been tasked to as a, a cop or whatever to watch over him. He's the one who's actually I mean spoiler alert, he was the he was the guy who's been talking to him on the phone and he helped Leonard actually kill the guy who was responsible for the murder of his wife and um, and his uh, injury as well. Towards the end of the film, Teddy reveals something that a great twist, I feel, to the film, although to be expected as well, where he... So you always hear Leonard talking about this Sammy guy and how he went through a similar situation as he's going now and that he was having a hard time through like conditioning to overcome his situation. And because of that, he overdosed his wife with insulin and because and which led to her like her state of coma and so teddy brought this up because it seemed like leonard just made up this character to kind of justify his sense of guilt or to at least like use it as a way to hide it that's why i say i sort of felt for teddy um he was sort of put in a situation where it was dangerous for him but he wanted to help out leonard at the same time i'm not saying what he did was right because they committed murder or he helped he assisted Leonard in committing murder and did it again just to see if whether or not Leonard would react differently. But it turned out that Leonard wasn't going to act differently at all. And instead, the the story turned on him because this John G guy that Leonard has been after, it turns out that Teddy's, the, his first and last name also is John G. Or I forget his last name completely, but it has John G in it. So he turned out to be the next John G that Leonard went after. And of course, ended up... Uh, getting killed by Leonard and that's what the movie started out with that the scene where Teddy gets killed by by Leonard you know whether you know all the the political or whatever aspects of this film you know you could be one side or whatever that's always a great conversation to have but in terms of like storytelling character development just being very engaged in the film I think this film did it really really well and it's like to me one of my favorite films of all time I have to agree with you I this is one of my favorite films I actually stumbled upon this because one of my friends back in high school gave me the DVD and said, watch it. And this is after he gave me, <laughs> he let me borrow The Matrix. So I watched The Matrix and having to see Teddy there and also Natalie and seeing them in the movie Memento. And I'm like, whoa, these characters are like back to back in movies. So it, it kind of made me appreciate it more. Also, the way they st- told the story, like you said, in a chronological order, but backwards. That's a very powering effect if you if you can say it like you said they only reveal a little bit which actually it's almost like a coarse meal but they feed you little by little and you're like oh that tasted good i want some more and you keep craving for more but then when you get to the big reveal at the end it makes you think of everything that you just consumed you're like am i consuming it in the right order do i have to see it from a different angle this movie had a lot of twists and turns that we didn't expect. Every time Lenny came back to a, a different scene, you're like, okay, this is going to reveal something, but it reveals something, but it lets you asking for something else. Then it goes back and kind of backtracks so you can see the whole picture. What I really enjoyed about this movie was 
the idea that at the end of the movie, you can either take it different ways. And I've heard a lot of people give it their own story twist, saying that Lenny is actually not Sammy Jenkins. He just using that to convince himself that he has to keep going. And if he doesn't have a plan, he's just going to either just sit there and die. So he wants to be on a mission constantly. And that report that he has, he consciously pulled some pages out of it to keep the mystery going. Teddy was there either to, like you said, to do something good to help him. But at the same time, other people have seen it the other way. He's also using Lenny the same way Natalie did use Lenny to kill people. Uh, first it was, you know, or he didn't kill Dodd, but he, she sent him to kill him. Uh, Teddy was like, look, let's get rid of this drug dealer, but I'm going to make him look like he's John G. And he's the guy, and at the same time, I'm going to take the money. That's that's what he said. Like, I, I'm in it to do something for me, but at the same time, I'm bringing closure to you. So what do you care? You know, you're not going to remember this anyways. The idea that you can see this in different multiple ways brings this movie to a higher level. It makes you want to see the truth that is your truth versus something else that other people tell you. If you think something is real, you're Lenny. And other people, when they tell you their versions, they're Teddy. And you are holding the picture that says, do not believe their lies. In the whole sense, you read our characters of this movie in real life. You know, what do you believe? What does this movie make you believe? What did you get out of it? This uh, movie was based off. This movie was based off a short story made by Jonathan Nolan, who is the younger brother of Christopher Nolan, who's the director of this movie. So he read the short story and he decided to adapt it into a movie. And this movie played so well because I've seen other short stories not really adapt to a movie format, but this movie did it so great. And the way you said it, two different points of view: the color versus the black and white. You never know what's going on. One is going straight forward chronologically. The other version, we're going backwards and we're always in the dark. So we feel like we are Lenny in this movie. Short term, we only see glimpses. We're looking through a keyhole. So we don't see the whole picture until the end. And by the end, we still don't know if it's real because we have to make it, we have to make our own story and come up with our own version. So this movie to me is on my top movie list that I enjoy. I can keep re-watching this movie over and over and keep enjoying the scenes. So with that said, Thule, let's give it our final grade. Yes, like I said, this is one of my favorite films of all time. And normally when I say something like that, it has to be a very high scored. So for me, I would give it a 9 out of 10. I agree with you. The same score I gave it, 9 out of 10. Amazing movie. And I wish uh, we had more movies like this. Another one that you said pops into mind is like Pulp Fiction. But I'm pretty sure there's other out there. And this movie is going to stand out in any format. So also, if you have the R2 DVD of this, I think there's a little Easter egg there. I can't remember how it goes, but you're able to watch the movie in chronological order. So you trigger a different playback. So it actually goes from, you know, the beginning to the end in chronological order. So you don't have all these jumps. So if you get really confused by the format, uh, search this out. I think there's uh, multiple websites on the Internet that tells you how to find it. But yes, this movie was great. So with that... We end this review for The Memento. Please join us next time when we review The Arrival from 1996 with Charlie Sheen. And social media is down in the description. And hit us up if you have any questions. And remember, keep watching movies.